If you ever played an online video game, you're very familiar with trolls. You may even be one yourself. And sometimes, professional gamers be trolling just as much as anyone else. Giving up in the middle of a match, typing weird things in the chat, picking Teemo. Things that maybe all of us have done, but not while competing in tournaments. Today, we take a look at times when players have trolled in professional games. Uh, is that on purpose? Uh oh. But before we get into that, today's video is sponsored by Pearlfessor. Pearlfessor is a companion app for League of Legends that genuinely gives you everything you need to perform better in your future games. The app provides you with automatically importing the best runes for your champion, so you never have to get pinged for having the wrong runes again. Jungle timers on the map showing you exactly when jungle camps are respawning, a summoner spell tracker to literally help you keep track of when your opponents have used their spells, along with a whole lot more useful features that you can pick and choose what you actually want to use. And to answer a question you may have, yes, this app is completely safe to use and complies with Riot's terms. It's basically taking all the information available and serving it back to you in a way you can easily read and access. Download the app for free with the first link in the description. Alright, let's get things started. Everyone knows that one guy on their team that begins trolling before the game even started by picking a champion that doesn't really make sense for their role. Well, pro players sometimes do some troll picks as well. This is Teemo, one of the most popular characters in the game, but one of the least played champions by professional players. In the Chinese LPL, one of the most competitive leagues in the world, Teemo has actually never been picked. And then, when he is picked in other leagues, the commentators think that the team is unironically trolling. Uh, what? what? Are you serious? Alright, that's like legit. I think that's legit. I think it is. I think, they're, uh, I think they've gotten to the point where they are so confident in this best of three that they are straight up trolling. Now, what would it take for a player to purposely troll in a professional game? Would 20,000 retweets do the trick? Because that's what the owner of TSM suggested in the 2016 LCS season. 20,000 retweets for a Teemo pick tomorrow. Happy face. The goal was reached and the team held their promise. Are you happy now, internet? I mean, look at that smile. Look. <laughs> Now, the reason for this kind of memory was because TSM currently had 16 wins and only one defeat in their season. So with this being their last game before playoffs, they decided it was okay to have a little bit of fun. But of course, there's a reason why Teemo isn't played by professionals. The Teemo player ended up with a score of 1 kill, 5 deaths, 1 assist, and lost the game. The Teemo has fallen. And fun fact, despite happening over six years ago, in the LCS, Teemo has never been picked again. Now, one player picking a silly champion is something, but what if everyone in the game decides to troll? In a 2012 MLG tournament, two professional teams met before the match and decided that instead of playing the game like normal, they would all go mid and play the game 5v5 like the ARAM game mode. However, they didn't tell the tournament organizers that this is what they were going to do. Both teams picked off-meta champions, and the commentators were confused before the game even started. Um, as it is, though, in the picks and bans here, not the picks and bans, that's never going to be the picks and bans. This is not going right. This is not what's going on. This apparently is real. If we hop over to champion select, that's never real. Not in a million years. The game lasted 31 minutes and ended up with a combined 151 kills between the two teams. After the game, both teams were disqualified from the tournament, because allegedly they had agreed before the match to not only play this game as in ARAM, but to also split the prize money when either team would win the tournament. So, who's trolling the other one the more? That's the question. <laughs> 
But hey, if you want a wholesome time of when pro players went all mid together, in July of this year, two teams from the Balkan League went all mid at the beginning of the game to have a minute of respect. This was in honor of one of the team's coaches who recently passed away. My toxic side would have went for first blood. Now, in regular games, some players don't actually troll in their gameplay, but they're a little weird or toxic in the chat. And in pro matches, it's no different. I actually have a whole video on the subject of players using the all chat feature, and the truth is, I think pro players do regularly type in the chat. Just all of the production teams have learned that it's best to make sure the viewers never get to see what the players are saying. However, although Riot Games has learned this lesson, you still get occasional weird chat interactions from players in other games. For example, a while back, two Overwatch pros were fined $1,000 each for being weird in the chat. After typing the words sex and big for some reason or another, a player in the game lets him know that they can see match chat. To which another player replies, Big Dick. Rascal saying Big Dick in the chat. Did he say Big Dick? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm making it. Oh my god. It is. I can see on stream. On a live stream with over 50,000 viewers, you can imagine Blizzard didn't like those strange messages popping up on the broadcast. A common or even unintentional way of trolling is refusing to communicate. But can a pro player decide that they no longer want to communicate with their teammates in the middle of a match? I'm not sure about the rules, but it's definitely happened before. I remember I was at Worlds in Season 4. I was on the analyst desk and RNG lost the game in the finals and Uzi refused to go back and with his team. He, still, he stayed on stage between games. Oh, which I think yeah, is actually yeah. against the rules right now. Um, really? And like, yeah, it's because he was just so pissed off. He didn't want to talk to his teammates between games. It actually wasn't during the finals, but instead the quarterfinals after losing game four in a best of five match. After their defeat, instead of going backstage to prepare for the next game with his team and coach, Uzi just sat on stage. Because we're only looking at Uzi, I can't see the rest of his team, but... I think, I think they've left. I think they've all left. He's certainly got no one to his right hand side. You can see some of his teammates coming out to support him here, seeing if everything's all right even as the referee checks in. But they got to prepare for game five. Shaking his head and... No. I don't think he wants want, to move. Doesn't want to move. Stay concentrated, stay in the seat. He wants Get the game ready to happen. for game number five. But hey, in the upcoming game, he ended up with the best score in the game and they won the match. So sometimes, maybe having a little bit of a tamper tantrum is actually good for you. Now here's the question, do pro players ever troll in regular games on their personal accounts? The answer is they do. And there's been many times when a pro player's trolling in solo queue resulted in them being punished in the real world. Not too long ago, a player from the LPL named Ching Chen received a two match suspension for his behavior in solo queue. Specifically, he was intentionally dying repeatedly and refusing to help his team in a ranked game on the Korean server. However, this wasn't any regular game. Ching Shan's mid laner was Faker, arguably the best pro League of Legends player. Faker was streaming during this time and was frustrated with the fact that another pro player was trolling his games, because by the end of the game, Ching Shan had died 16 times. Faker said, To be honest, I don't understand why Chinese pros are allowed to have Riot Super accounts in the first place. If I meet that kind of player one more time, I'll just boycott playing the game. This guy should never be allowed back on the Korean server, or at least receive some kind of punishment. And he did indeed receive a punishment. Alongside his two match suspension, he was also fined almost $8,000. After receiving his punishments, he later posted a PR apology saying, I will accept all the punishments from the team and the league. I sincerely apologize to all the nine players in the game. I am sorry. From now on, I will treat every game with integrity. I'm not sure how genuine these words are, but what I do know is it seems trolling faker can be pretty expensive. 
But all right, guys, thank you as always for watching. Let me know of any trolling situations I may have missed here, and I'll see you again very soon. Take care.